Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. And this is the place to be for conscious purpose driven entrepreneurs who want to remove the blocks that hold them back so they can step into their purpose and manifest abundance through it. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are one of those conscious purpose driven entrepreneurs looking for assistance, community, courses, coaching, brain spotting, which is trauma healing, um, to, to assist you in this healing process, then we have a community and a membership just for you where you can access all of the above, most especially those courses, coaching, and free brain spotting sessions to allow you to move through these blocks so that you can step into your purpose. So if you're interested in joining us, check out the link below. Let's talk today about escapism that because I work with purpose-driven entrepreneurs, that typically includes whether you, you know, I'm not big on labels. I, if I had to choose one, I would say heart-centered beings. Um, some people identify as spiritual or a light worker, and it really just um, boils down to whether or not you are a conscious heart-centered person. So if you identify with any of those, then spiritual escapism might be something that is holding you back right now. And I have found in the work that I have done with many beautiful conscious heart-centered beings over the course of the last couple of years now in doing lots of free brain spotting sessions, which I do also offer still, there's a link below, um, the, the escapism is the, one of the biggest challenges. And it's interesting from a psychology perspective, which I am, if you follow me, you know, very big on psychology biology, neurobiology, and just really understanding the mechanism of this body that we've been given and how it works, it is really critical to understand. It's like having a sports car, the sports car or a race car and never being given instructions on how to drive it. So we really need to understand the tendencies of the brain, of the nervous system of the body and how it wants to deal with difficulty. And the brain's job, because it is to keep you safe, often will want to try to escape pain. And one of the biggest challenges that we face collectively as humanity is that pain is part of life. That life will not always be rainbows and sunshine. That there is going to be a smaller percentage, does not have to be a vast majority of your life. If you choose to move through it, it won't be but there is a percentage of your life a small percentage that will include challenge and when we especially as kind good-hearted people if you identify as sensitive or empathic or highly in tune with others however again you want to label it it's really not about the labels but that often will come from a place of experiencing difficulty in your life, extreme difficulty, especially in childhood, can happen at any point in your life. But if you essentially didn't feel safe for an extended period of time, you are dealing with a, um, a, a, st a state of trauma, of complex trauma. And again, the brain wanting to keep you safe is going to want to avoid that. So what I have found is the hearted people who experience trauma in their childhood will have an extreme need to escape. It is part of the, the coping mechanism. It is how we survive in some of these situations, but spirituality can provide an outlet that is unhealthy, that gives us justification for escape. And escaping can also be called avoidance it could be called disassociation i'll do a whole separate video on disassociation because that's different but spiritual escapism happens under the the guise of enlightenment or ascension or you know um, multi-dimensional travel things of that nature and and to some degree those things likely are true we're still gathering the science on that to be able to say that definitively but i think a lot of us know that we have experienced these things in very real ways and so it is a fine line it's a fine line between being a multi-dimensional being and also understanding escapism and the tendency towards that and recognizing that spirituality can give us sort of a hall pass to check out and that is not healthy and we will 
unfortunately create or um, extend the the challenge by trying to escape it. So remembering that escapism will look something like numbing our emotions or desiring a quick fix or whatever your go-to fight, flight, fawn, freeze mechanism is. That um, if we constantly feel like, you know, this house or this neighborhood or this town must be the problem, so I'm gonna keep moving. That is an extension of your flight response right many times you'll notice that you are experiencing spiritual escapism if you are looking for overnight enlightenment because it's appealing to escape the challenges right that magic fix that quick fix overnight the get rich quick scheme right manifestation is another way that this is sort of sneaky and sneaks into our lives where we want to just grab the bag of potato potato chips and go veg out on a series of Netflix and just assume that my frequency and vibration is going to bring it to me. We want to rush to make things happen so that we can avoid the pain that comes with dedication, discipline and commitment to creating change. Many times again the the fragile ego or the trauma brain or or the wounded trauma responses that come with these difficult experiences can hide under the guise of goals or perfectionism right that our goal to be someone else to be somewhere else to to gain greater clarity to gain greater certainty to to find the quick fix is trying to escape that difficulty that is necessary for us to face and move through in order to truly get to the other side where it can be predominantly more enjoyable than painful. It is odd and it it seems counterintuitive, but the avoidance of the pain perpetuates the pain. They say that pain plus resistance equals suffering. And so our escapism is the resistance to it. We're looking for a safe and cozy bubble and <laughs> no greater time in my life have I ever seen more bubbles being offered. That there's a lot of coddling, that we have to be so careful about what we say to who we say. Everyone's fragile. And that's not serving us. That as we put bubbles around people, we are avoiding tripping their triggers when in the end, the trigger is the gift. It is what helps us see the area in our bodies and in our lives that needs healing, that needs our focus and attention. The real growth happens in those moments of pain and pressure. True fulfillment and happiness comes through what we overcome what we move through there's peaks and valleys in life the valley is lush and green and beautiful but we have to climb the summit of the peak to get to the lush valley and we just kind of hang out on the cliff pretending that we don't see the challenges, the things we're being asked to move through. And we pretend that we're comfortable sitting on the side of that cliff instead of getting to the place of true joy and fulfillment. The way we can heal this, there's many ways. I, of course, always will bring in brain spotting because it is the modality that healed and, and literally saved my life. It is a somatic healing, which is necessary for anyone who has experienced not feeling safe, seen, heard, cared for, or loved for an extended period of time, which a vast majority of us have, especially if you look at COVID. We'll go into that another day. But in this moment, often the escapism, the desire to escape is driven by the fear of the pain. And so my number one tip for you today would be to choose a new perspective of that pain see it with new eyes label it with new meaning what does pain and challenge mean 
Does it mean suffering? Or does it mean growth? That by choosing a new perspective on pain, beautiful sun, how dare I complain? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we don't get to see much of it, but I realize it's not great for the video. There's plenty of clouds, so I'm sure it'll calm down in just a moment. By choosing a new perspective on pain and challenge, we get to appreciate it for the progress, the growth that it offers. So in those moments where you're feeling the pressure and the compression, the, the nudge and the push to, to grow, to release, to heal, to face the wounds, to move through, to be disciplined, to, to get your butt out of bed at 6 a.m. instead of 9 so that you can get things done, so that you can create a life that you love see that as an opportunity see that as a gift find gratitude and awe and appreciation for it our greatest inhibitor is the desire to escape or bypass the difficult parts of life that the reward lies on the other side of moving through that of remaining committed to the path committed to discipline committed to growth and change committed to taking action committed to trust faith and surrender to the process. So I have a couple of quotes for you before we end today. The first one is by a beautiful, beautiful man that I highly, highly respect and I trust that someday I will get to meet in person. His name is Basil Vanderkolk and he is a probably one of the most respected professionals in the trauma healing industry. He is the author of The Body Keeps the Score. Um, it's all about healing trauma and how we have to use somatic therapies to be able to truly move through these triggers and blocks. And in his book, he says, traumatized people chronically feel unsafe in their bodies. The past is alive in a form that is gnawing the interior, causing discomfort. Their bodies are constantly bombarded by visceral warning signs, somatic flashbacks. In an attempt to control the processes, they often become an expert at ignoring their feelings and numbing the awareness of what is played out on the inside. They learn to hide from themselves. Spirituality gives us that hall pass to hide, that we hide under the guise of hermit mode or healing for years and years and years on end. And while those things are necessary for a short period of time, days, ideally, weeks, maybe months at most, not years, that there is a point where that enough is enough and we have to come to that place where we are willing to take our power back, to make shifts and changes in our life. And I would say one of the most compelling guidance that I received early on in building this business was that my mission was to unleash the potential in heart-centered beings because you are made perfectly imperfect for a purpose but you cannot step into that purpose until you take back the reins of your life take your power back a light worker is meant to shine and you cannot shine if you are not in your power another absolutely amazing quote i discovered uh, because of this conversation by a man saul bello he says, and this is one that bears repeating because it, it takes a minute to really concentrate on what's being said here. He says, a great deal of intelligence can be invested in ignorance when the need for illusion is deep. I'm going to say that one more time. A great deal of our intelligence will be invested in ignorance, willful ignorance, when the need for illusion is deep. And essentially what that's pointing to is the pain is too much to face. Or so we perceive. Know that the brain changes when you experience situations that are too difficult to handle. The emotional center becomes enlarged and the prefrontal cortex in charge of executive function and making intelligent decision shrinks. But thank God for neuroplasticity, these things can heal 
through things like exercise and trauma healing and nervous system management, we can shift our brains back to their original state. So know that the perception of this pain as being too great to face or too great to deal is an illusion. And it is an illusion we created and we have invested a lot of our intelligence and our capability in creating the ignorance of the need for healing, the ignorance of the need for moving through in an effort to create an illusion to keep us safe. But it is an illusion, it is not safe, and it will perpetuate your pain. Finally, one of my favorite influencers that I look up to, a mentor again, I will meet someday, I'm commanding these things into reality, Brendan Bouchard, sorry, Brendan Bouchard, <laughs> says avoidance is the best short-term strategy to escape conflicts and also the best long-term strategy to ensure suffering. That we believe, we allow the trauma brain to convince us that turning away and escaping from the thing that we don't want to look at is going to keep us safe. We allow the trauma brain to lie to us when the truth is the escapism will perpetuate the suffering. One more that's coming to mind, one of my favorites, is choose your heart. That life will bring you challenges either way. You will experience hard things either way. To me, it is far harder to remain in a soul-sucking job, in a toxic relationship, in the life that they said I should live for my entire life, avoiding the pain, the short-term pain, of walking away and commanding the motivation, commanding the effort and the discipline within myself to come forward to build a new life. Living that life I don't love forever is so much harder than the couple of years it takes to build this business and to reach a level of fulfillment, contribution, purpose, abundance, community, soul family, the list goes on and on. So choose your heart. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do it for the rest of my life. Just remember, avoidance will always catch up with you. Without challenges, we would be spoiled brats. So let's find some appreciation for it. Kids don't always want to do what is good for them. We have to remember that we are in charge of parenting ourselves. As you know, I am a mother. Just last night, my five-year-old wanted to stay up way past her bedtime to fi finish a movie. And of course, to her, staying up until 11 o'clock on a school night seemed like a great idea. She wanted immediate gratification. But it is my job, it is the universe's job, God, source, creator, divine universe, to say, no, I love you, my child, so much so that I'm going to tell you, you must do this thing you don't want to do, so that tomorrow you are rested, you are prepared, you are at your best, you are capable, and you are able, because we did the hard thing. So just remember, some of the most successful people have extremely high levels of discipline. And in these moments where we are escaping, we are disassociating, we are numbing out, we are avoiding, that it is gonna be a level of discipline to ask ourselves to invest in our growth, to pursue the healing, to face the pain, to move through it. And I'll close with this, finally, it will not last forever. This is another lie of the trauma brain is that if it feels that if you face that pain, it's going to last forever. It's going to overwhelm me. It's going to overcome me. It's going to overtake me. I will crumble. I can't survive this. That's the lie of the trauma brain. But the truth is you expend so much more energy trying to avoid it than you ever would moving through it. And in a few short sessions, you could be on the other side of it, freeing up all this energy for expansion 
and growth and reclaiming who you were meant to be and becoming aligned to your natural initial design, your divine design, your initial blueprint. Who you are in this avoidant escapist state is who the world has made you to be. Healing and moving through it, dedication and commitment to the path will allow you to realign to your original design. And if you need any help with this, please do reach out. Free 30-minute healing sessions below. That is the best way to kickstart this. In 30 minutes or less, I promise you I can identify the root cause of your biggest block, whether it's abundance or purpose, because they're usually connected. Otherwise, the community is a great place to be as well, and we would love to welcome you there. All right, please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share if there's anyone that you know that could benefit from this video. I love you all so, so much, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, my friends. Namaste.